from their encounters with races from other planets. The information is the activation. Let's awaken this world together. We are the forever students, and we will not be silent. We are the ones that we've been waiting for. Pretty well. Welcome, everybody, to Full Spectrum Universe, the broadcast that is behind enemy lines. In the once great state of New York, welcome, everybody. Welcome to the first broadcast of 2023. We talked about this through in and throughout. 2022 was the year of the truth seeker, and the fruits that we bore are going to be that it's going to make 2023 the year of accountability. Welcome, everybody. Thank you very much for coming with us tonight. This is a live broadcast. It is 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. Pacific. If you're not here, then my friends, it's this is going to be just an incredible, incredible episode. We're going to be talking about grids. We're going to be talking about the planetary grid networks and the network setup. We're going to touch on every planetary grid network that there is, the purpose of those networks, who created those networks, some of which are good, some of which are bad. We're going to show you how to access these networks. We have so much to go over. I mean, truly just an incredible amount. But before we do that, I just want to say Happy New Year. I hope everybody had a happy, healthy, amazing new year. This is the new time or the new generation, the new paradigm that we've created out there. And what that means is we're moving into this space where those who go against the grain in a way that are not conducive to essentially lifting humanity are going to be called out for their wrongdoings and or, you know, their lack thereof effort to help humans and help help the human race. This is the golden age of humanity. So welcome everybody to that as well. We saw that by the solstice changing over, everything was getting a little bit wild. We felt it. We talked about it. We can see four days into 2023 that even within the Constitution you know, of America's government, there are certain people trying to hold other people's feet to the fire. And while you may think it's wrong or right, that's neither here nor there. What I'm telling you is that there's people who are putting foots forward to hold those accountable who basically go and literally take every line hook link uh, hook line and sinker from the lobbyists and i truly think that once we get the money out of politics things will change another one of my fortes is political analyst i can do that we're not talking about that tonight tonight we're going to be talking about planetary energy grids there's quite a few of them we have some diagrams to show you on how these grids kind of lay out we also have, you know, a tremendous amount of information that goes with each one. So <clears throat> we're going to jump into it really quick. Remember, please, if you can, donate to the broadcast. At the, at the top of every chat, there is a link to the PayPal so you can donate specifically to the broadcast. All proceeds go back into the broadcast to help us achieve maximum capacity in the sense of information and finding things behind paywalls information setting up new avenues and ways to share this information so that, it's very much appreciated if you could and if you can't say some prayers for us send some healing energies our way we truly appreciate all of it also share this out when people become aware of these grids and start to tap into these grids they find their purpose and or themselves who they truly are this is a tremendous point of interest right now. These energy grids have been fought over for eons because these are ways that we essentially connect to the mother, right? The mother being the earth. So also when this broadcast is finished, please leave a comment underneath the broadcast. It is so critical for the analytics and for YouTube to push this to more people when people interact with this broadcast if there's any questions throughout the broadcast please put it in the chat try and caps lock it and we'll do our best to answer it as best as we can so without further ado 
let us get into it. Planetary energy grids. So we know that there are such things called ley lines, right? Ley lines is one of the planetary grids. There are sub-levels of planetary grid. There are upper levels, as in dimensional density levels. There are some, some of these will reside within the third density. Some will reside within the fifth density. Some will reside within the seventh density. So some of these planetary grids are using the third density anchor to essentially connect the fifth density to the third density, and so on and so forth. So let's keep that in mind as we go forward. So the first energy grid we're going to be talking about is the A-PIN network, the Atlantean Pylon Implant Network. This one is one of the major ones that essentially is happening right now. So the Atlantean Pylon Network, the planetary grid networks that were created by members of the threefold founder flame and the Orofim, right? These A-pin networks include the Great White Lion and the Golden Eagle Grid, which we're going to go over specifically in a couple moments, right? The A-pin reinforces the original morphogenetic fields and support the DNA and the consciousness of all planetary life through ascension. The A-pin components are generally linked up using crystal-based technology. It's like embedding microchips into a computer that uh, essentially are into the Earth. And this is a selected format in which they use the crystal-based technology. We know that crystals hold the most amount of information, so most information can be stored within these crystals that essentially are implanted into the Earth, and that is used to connect the A-PIN network, right? So the Guardians have used this specific network for free energy systems, climate stabilization, healing, interstellar communication, and broadcasting networks. The A-PINs were designed in the shapes of creatures based upon the genetics so extra dimensionals could easily identify them from space. Right. In some cases, these shapes are representative of the threefold founder flame creators themselves. It's not a coincidence that many Earth's creatures resemble ETs because they all have a genetic line, such as the lions, the cats, the reptiles, the insects, the birds, so on and so forth. By having a creature extension of themselves on Earth, that's what happens. The Earth is a arc. That we are an arc planet. We hold all genetical codes for the entire multiverse, literally, right? And these ETs have a consciousness and awareness connection line to this planet. And that is part of the process of consciousness and the evolution of consciousness. <clears throat> some people become aware of that. That's how some people get telepathic communications from ETs through the A-pin grid. Sometimes there's a direct connection, but the A-pin grid gives them access, right? So the first A-pins were created 5.5 million years ago by an advanced guardian founder race. The Leonian race created the great white lion, and the avian race created its a companion, the golden eagle grid. So to give support to the earth and to prevent an evolutionary descent, left unattended, it was certainly, you know, something that they that they didn't mean for it to be unattended for so long. So these benevolent A-pin interfaces with the reinforce and the resonance of the original blueprints, they essentially underline all of creation. So by supporting the Earth's inner morphogenetic structure and its blueprint, a.k.a. DNA codes, these grids correspondingly support the DNA and the consciousness to all of life on this planet, and in particular, in aiding the civilization and the planet through the ascension cycles itself. So we're going to talk about a word very quickly. We're going to define this word. We're going to, it's the philanthropic, right? Philanthropic, seeking to promote the welfare of others, especially by donating money to good causes, generous and benevolent, right? These are philanthropic networks. And they are the, the Great White Lion, 
the four pillars of man grid, the sacred blue cow grid, and the golden eagle grid. However, the latter two, which is the the golden eagle grid, right, and the sacred blue cow grid, were hijacked by the invaders, right? So the golden eagle grid was renamed to the white eagle. And this is a system that is controlled by invaders of the negative alien agendas races of the ETs. So the f there there's a bunch of other grids that essentially are not ours. They are of those negative ETs. That's the Phoenix grid, the Falcon grid, the Serpent grid, the Dragon Moth grid, the Jehovian grids, the NETs, the NRGs, the Michael Mary Turnstile Matrix, or the NDC. We're going to define all of those acronyms later, right? All of these systems are energized during this ascension cycle, every planetary time cycle. So it's basically every yuga cycle, every 26,556 years. When the mechanics of the ascension process are functioning properly is when it's that 26,000-year period actually turns itself on, right? So in our case so far, it hasn't been functioning properly. So for eight previous time cycles, there was a misconstruct there was a misconstruing of time or a misconstruing of the cycle itself. And some of these global grids, such as the NDC, are activated by artificially applied scalar sonic pulses, right? So that's the beginning of the A-pin networks. Now we're going to get into specifics of the A-pins and really go in deep on some of them. So the first four we're going to talk about is called the four living creatures, right? This is the ones that represent of course, animals, they all do, but these are the ones that are a little bit more towards us as opposed to the ascension, not the negative alien agendas. And yes, this is a great comment. Are we not coming into a 26,000 year cycle now? Yes, we are at the end of a yuga cycle and about to jump into another. And I'm going to bring it back to me real quick because there's something I want to talk about. We've had people on that talked about yuga cycles. And from my experience in researching yuga cycles, it seems that there are, I, I guess each yuga cycle is broken in half. And I'm going to tell you why. At that halfway point through each yuga cycle, so about every 12,000 years, mankind is faced with a, you know, cataclysmic event, whether it be, um, you know, a reactor in Atlantis going off whether it be a, a meteor, whether it be an ice age, every 12,000 years, there is a constant yuga cycle event. And this is called the tribulation or the test of man. And what happens? At that time, mankind does one of two things. We either excel past that point and come together and work together and enhance society, or we get knocked back into the Stone Age. And it's happened quite a few times where we've actually gotten knocked back into the Stone Age, which is why we see the mainstream people that talk about history use 12,500 to 13,000 year starting point period from right now. Because man was knocked back into the Stone Age at that point. So everything went back to basics and we worked our way back out of the mud again, right? Let's keep going. So the four living creatures. The four living creatures, as described in the books of Ezekiel, are the four main planetary grid networks which connect into the Magi Grail crown four royal stars, which spans into the three harmonic universes. So these four living grids of four grids expand into the original tribes of the 12, which is the Magi Grail Crown, right? And we also have the four, uh, the three harmonic universes. The four living creatures hold the, 
the cosmic clock of the aeons or the eons and the timelines connected into the galactic core that comprise the instruction sets and the organic history records upon Earth, Tara, and Gaia. The four living creatures are the great white lion, the golden eagle grid, the sacred blue cow or oxen, and the four pillars of man, planetary grid networks. The four pillars of man are also known as the four faces of man or God, which unify with the other three networks in order to generate the fifth elemental principle of design ethers, which are the guardians of the pillars, right? We're going to talk about the guardians of the pillars a little bit down the road. We've already touched on them quite a bit recently. So one of the starting points of these four living creatures is the Aurora Dragon Luminary Mission. And you think to yourself, that's a mouthful. What the hell is that? Well, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. So the Aurora Crystal Star Luminaries from the next stage of edu- evolution into the Andromedan Matrix have also returned to reclaim the crystal architecture and the Christos spiritual bodies that are to be reanimated in the new universal cycle. The golden Aeonesis or the of Christos Sophia is what that's called. We are in the physical conduit into the earth plane with the mission to help reanimate the grid of the four living creatures that make up our collective human consciousness and our emotional elemental body. The four living creatures are represented through angelic human founder lineages of the lion, eagle, ox, and the Hugh man, H-U-M-A-N, Hugh man, that together form into the guardian consciousness network that make up the planetary grid networks themselves. The planetary grid networks were infiltrated by negative entities that are the fallen angelic hierarchies of, of the negative agenda aliens that invaded our planet to enslave humanity, right? The four pillars of man unite to awaken the 12 guardians of the pillar and through the unification of the four living creatures in the planetary body. These guardians protect the creation by embodying connections from the solar Christ bodies and in so to, to walk into an identity in every dimensional station of time. As we awaken From the inanimate clay of human flesh, we ignite the fire of God in our crystal hearts throughout the aurora luminaries to animate our freshly being into the eternal solar body. We then become reborn children of the sun, the embodied diamond sun guardians of creation. So, we're going to talk about each individual four living creatures grid and they have they all have acronyms right so the first one is the great white lion guardians of the verticals this is egypt and water and you can see what the grid looks like on your screen right now now looking at it you could say well that looks like a lion yeah that that's the point this is the point this and and we know what creatures come from the lions, right? Or look like the lions, the lyrans. So this is probably one of their offshoots. This is above what the lyrans are. But we're talking about the original lyrans, not the lyrans of today. There were two sets of lyrans. We've gone over it in Galactical Beginnings, right? So let's keep this going. Let's keep moving. So... You see the way that this is mapped out. Now, during this points of or points on this map where you see the pause and things like that, you're going to see a com- complete uh, comparativeness to the Sphinx. I'm going to go over that a little bit, too. So the Great White Lion or the APEN network was created by pure races and the Guardian founders. This is the founder feline planetary grid network. And it was created by the Elohi Elohim 
felines and Leonian Christos races in their image. The ape and grid networks were designed in the consciousness ray of the founder lineages. The great white lion is the mother races of the blue ray and part of the threefold founder flame and the aqua blue ray of the mother arc. So that should tell you a little bit right there. Let's get to how it compares to the Sphinx. Thus, the lion ape in is in the image of the feline Leonian race. Note that the Sphinx, which originally has, it originally had a lion's head, was built as a tribute to the Elohim feline races of the blue founder of the blue ray founders. The resistance Nibiru and Anunnaki defiled and altered it. The heart of the great white lion grid is located at the 12 dimensional ray or the energy center, which is a node or stargate portal in the south of France. And it stabilizes the 12 primary vertical axional lines. The golden eagle grid is anchored on the Iranian gate in the Middle East, and it stabilizes the 12 primary horizontal lines. And the great white lion is the guardian of the north and south ley lines. The golden eagle grid is the guardian of the east and west ley lines. So there are entities that guard the ley lines. Now, the ley lines have been corrupted to a point. And then when they were corrupted to a point, that wasn't good enough. So they created their own grids to run parallel to the ley lines. And sometimes when people go to tap into a ley line to get energy, they tap into the wrong grid. They tap into the negative grid where it hurts and defiles their body. This is why it's important to understand this information, right? So next... We're going to talk about the Golden Eagle Grid, or the Guardian of the Horizontals. This is Iraq, and it looks as if it's air, right? You saw the last one was water. You see the trend? The four components that are essentially earth, air, water, and there's another one. We're going to get to it, fire, right? So there's a lot of things that come in congruencies of four. So the four living creatures, there's a lot of connection here. The four elements that we know of. And also there are, you know, fours become angel numbers when we look at astrology and we look at time, right? So let's keep going. So we're talking about the golden eagle grid, right? So this is focused on the horizontal lines the mental bodies that work within the timelines, basically past or future identity clearings. This was created by the seraphim and avian or the gold ray genetic healing, right? This is a gold ray genetic healing base. This is also somewhere that the fallen angelics or satanics try to release energy, right? This is a male principle healing grid it is air element is emphasized during the golden eagle grid because listen what does an eagle do an eagle flies and when the eagle flies it rides the air or the wind so there's symbolism with that so now we're going to get into a little bit of history around this gate or this uh not gate i apologize this grid So this is the false Michael construct that is connected to the Iranian gate or the Iran gate, as some call it. So the golden eagle grid was taken over and named the white eagle and combined with the Jehovah grids. Sadly, the Archangel Michael matrix is a mind control broadcast and a biological weapon used to track and hunt spiritually awakened indigos which is designed to transmit artificial frequencies that reverse the fire letters so that the christos dna template becomes distorted this area is the most prominent to institute the false michael sightings and broadcast usurped channeling into the gold eagle grid network 
It also has a circulatory system linked to the Giza and the 4D astral plane gate and others as well. So what does that mean? That means that sometimes when people channel or they are channelers, they use the golden eagle grid. And because it's connected to the Jehovah grids, the transmission is usurped by an entity of that's unbecoming. And it gives them information as if it was the original entity. We see that tons and tons of times. So when tapping into channeling, we have to be leery of the golden eagle grid and at least know how the energy fluctuates within it. So if you want to channel and you want to basically not encounter an archon or a negative entity, you have to understand how the grid works, right? And this is what we call the false Michael construct. And the Iranian gate is a place where these entities do that business and in, in the usurping of these messages. So just be careful when you're doing it. So let us keep going. We're going to talk about the sacred blue cow grid, right? This is the guardians of the blue ray family. This is India and earth. So as we go through these different entities or, or these different systems, you're going to see that there is a lot of information that it comes up to you as you go through it. So just, Sit back, enjoy it, try and get something from it. And essentially, when we focus on these things, you may tap in immediately. And that's kind of the crazy part about it. Sometimes when we tap in immediately, we get information. And it's important to understand that everything still must be taken with a grain of salt, right? So let's keep going. So the blue. The sacred blue cow, this is the earth element that is emphasized here. The sacred blue cow, cow grid is the planetary network that has surfaced into awareness with the recent amethyst order activity. And this is about the rehabilitation projects transpiring in the planetary grids as we speak. In relationship to the running of the Christos base 12 current and the new elements from the God worlds, remember the seven... Uh, seven layers of heaven or the seven godly worlds out there. This has the purpose of overriding the current problems that generate grid reversal damage connected to the dragon moth grid. We're going to talk about the dragon moth grid in a little while. And so upon the rehabilitation of two Atlantean timelines and these wormholes that have been used to infiltrate and gain control over the sacred blue cow grid. So these fallen entities have been evicted and the Amethyst Order has reclaimed it into its higher purpose and serving the Christos family. It's been registered that the corruption of the sacred blue cow from the Atlantean timeline has been related to producing assortments of fallen RA entities, many from the sixth dimension. Some of the fallen Ra consciousness are being rooted out into an anti-Christos creation matrix, which is not a punishment, but a similar, it's kind of similar to a re-education in learned self-mastery. So they're not destroying them. They're putting them somewhere where they can rediscover themselves and hopefully come back to the side of light. This appears to be for the purpose of setting up an interme uh, intermediary transit station in which aspects of the fallen consciousness that are not classified as vandals can learn how to regenerate themselves and grow by learning the consequences of their choices. They're directly experiencing them in the field, right? They will be responsible to find their soul family or raw fragments and work on healing lost spiritual body parts. They're being sent into a complete tri-wave Christos creation field. This would usually be painful and traumatizing for them at this stage of development. So, you know, we have to kind of understand what's happening. So by reclaiming the sacred blue cow grid, 
we have activated it, which has been activated again by the return of the amethyst order and corrected this this correction corrected the 5d 60 and 70 fire letter sequences that have been brought with them right and it's been revealed that the syrian blue humans and the amethyst order joined together to build this planetary network to run the base 12 current and this to protect the Michael Mary heart twinning into sacred union and help protect the Asia India grids from being overtaken by the dragon moth grid. So all this time where people were like, we're going to jump from 3d to 5d without going through 4d, you would, that wouldn't happen. You'll, you're going to go to 3d, 4d, 5d, but 5d would have been through a corrupted network if they hadn't come back and basically, you know, nullified the corruption of that network. So when you would have hit and when you would have hit 5D, you would have felt a distortion or a temporal difference, and it would have caused you to feel off as as your fifth dimensional self. You may have split and refragmented back down to the third dimensional body. It could have happened. But they fixed it knowing that we were going into the ascension cycles, right? So the Syrian blues hold the sixth dimensional indigo blue flame fire letters to build the masculine wing of Michael, while the amethyst order holds the 7D violet flame letters to build the feminine wing of Mary, which instigates a purge and extraction of crucif uh, crucifixion implants occurring on the left-hand side of the human light body, on the seventh axonal line, and as a result of these strong these strong transmissions of corrected frequency spectrums of the sixth indigo ray and the seventh violet rays, an upswell of higher frequency supports us in the present and bringing forth the unified Michael Mary spiritual initiation referred to as the building of wings or building wings right so we talked about the 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 base 12 code mechanics which represents the natural order of the universal time matrix an organic creation and inner sustaining architecture that connects directly with the god source field for an unlimited supply of consciousness energy this is an open source energy structure inherently referred to as the Christos blueprint. Just to kind of go back and re, you know, redo the terminology so you understand it a little bit better. So as you can see, there is a lot going on. And there we're like i said we're going to get to the other side we're still doing the four living creatures we talked about the base code base code is also what you see within your dna right we see that we're going to talk about that a little bit as well so now we're going to talk about the four pillars of man grid right the 12 guardians of the tribal shield if you go back to older episodes we've talked about the 12 tribes the 12 guardians of the magi grail kings Right. And we also talked about the tribal shield matrix or the tribal shields, which protect humanity. So this is directly in line with that. Right. There's correlation here. So this is the fire sign. And this is based out of Easter Island. Right. So when we talk about the point of interest that you see on these slides, that's the center point or Maybe not so much the center point as you would see it on a map, but the center point of the energy, right? I, yes. Yes. The answer to this question is yes. So do we need to specify what grids we are sending our light to every time without fail? We have to concentrate and focus on the specific grid. You could do that by literally visualizing the animal. Or you can do a small prayer and, and speak the words into truth, right? And that's how you access it. Each grid has something different to offer you. You could literally meditate on each different grid and each day and get something different from it, right? 
the four the four aspects of the living the four living creatures of aspects of the four living creatures is essentially the four parts that make up humanity right so we see that earth wind fire so on and so forth so yes as we keep going here let's talk about the four pillars of man this is also called fpm this is relates to the founder flame consciousness grid network that is located in chile at easter island right the four main pillars of consciousness units are massive light sound pillars that are related to the creation of the entire human 12 tribes and 144 harmonics in the dna genetic template these consciousness units are the collective pillars or pillar and the consciousness structure of the founders elemental bodies these contain all genetic elemental material and race histories throughout the entire root race evolution cycles which you can tap into at any point in time and be privy to understanding your life cycles or incarnation cycles by looking back as far as you can in this information when the diagonal lines are activated on the planet earth at the end of the ascension cycle through the great white lion vertical and the golden eagle grid horizontal or rod and staff alignment which we've talked about too the three parallel universes merge together through the activated four pillars of man network so to bring into context a little bit we're going to talk about the four pillars of man grid from the lumarian network Remember Atlantis and Lumeria, they were big points of of building this sort of architecture. And it's not really architecture. Again, energy systems and grids is classified architecture, right? Or something that stymies the flow of these grids is also called architecture. Let's keep that in mind. So founders, four races of man. The Elpin, which we talked about before, is in three sets of the four faces. One full set is an extension of the Earth's Elpin connecting, right? Higher aspects of Earth's planets, Tara and Gaia. The second set is another four faces of man on parallel Earth, parallel Tara, and parallel Gaia. The third set on the inner Earth and connecting to its higher planets of inner Tara and inner Gaia. Hence the statement of the guardians of the 12 pillars, three sets of four faces and sound pillars, right? The four faces of man is the most extensive in space time, but some of the others have connections to parallel earth. So the four faces of man or the Elpin, which is the Lumerian Pylon Implant Network, has been referred to as the guardians of the four corners and angels of the four directions. Its four heads are anchored in by the sound pillars. In recognition of the founder's creation of the four faces of man, the Easter Island heads were built by ancient Indigo Maji descendants. This Lumerian grid created between 22,500 B.C. and 22,326 B.C. was designed to restore the 12D blueprint on Earth and prevent the fall of Earth into the Phantom Matrix. At the last planetary time cycle, intruder Anunnaki raided Earth and prevented this Elpin from being activated during that ascension cycle. Thus, it was rescheduled till sometime between 2012 and now and it began and this began its its first activation cycle within in 2001 and the final cycle or the 12th cycle in 2003 bringing the great white lion and the golden eagle grid online the four faces of man is designed at utilizing such high frequencies that the fallen ETs or the negative aliens can't handle those specific energies. This is why we do this, right? This is why we talk about this. 
right now, we're raising all of your vibrations. You're vibrating higher, so no entities can, unbeknownst to you, come to you, be around you. They will not survive. I tell, you know, I'm going to bring it back to me for a second. I see shadow people now and again, right? That could be two things that I think. It could be a parallel earth and there's some sort of bleed through where, you know, I can see who's where via shadow or these are arconic spirits, arconic, you know, type of entities. One of the things that I tell everybody, these arconic entities can't get near me because of the work that I do in maintaining my vibration. The best that they can do is come close, but they will be scorned by the light. They will not survive, right? So basically what we're talking about is maintaining a, a complete access to these energy grids to keep your vibrational state as high as possible or your frequencies as high as possible. Yes, they do offer places to, to, to go and look or see and utilize information through which this is carried on these grids and these networks. But when you're tapped in all the time, you resonate at a higher vibratory state. Therefore, you are connected to the great Mother Earth more because you're on her networks, right? You can also feel fluctuations are like, you know, you can feel something in the force is the best way to put it. It'll come to, it'll wash over you because you'll feel the differences in the energies, especially when you get used to tapping into them all the time. It's important to know these grids, right? We have all of the negative entity grids to go over now, which is going to take us a minute. So we're going to go into it and look at the grids while they're up on the screen. So this is the Phoenix grid. The Phoenix wormhole was created in 10,500 BC in the time wall by the Pleiadian Nibiru Anunnaki. It was anchored into the earth and the, the basically through the stargate at Giza. This is links to Phantom Nibiru or the fan or Nibiru within the Phantom Matrix. And this would cause fallen portions of Earth from an inha inhabitable moon around the planet Phantom Nibiru, right? So the Phoenix Apen runs east on the line through the Giza and Iran gate. The Draconians and the Zeta Reticulans then copied the Phoenix with their Falcon wormhole intended to take over the Phoenix as the, the full Falcon A pin was installed, right? So the Philadelphia experiment of 1943 expanded this wormhole port interface system, which runs on a reverse 10D current and connects Earth to the phantom Earth. The negative alien, a, the negative alien agenda aims to use it to take over the dragon grid A pin during the end of the ascension cycle, right? So the Dove Grid A pin was linked to the NDC and was connected to the Phoenix Grid. We're going to see a lot of these grids connect to the Phoenix Grid because that that Stargate in Egypt, which is was under their control, is their direct current source, right? So the next one we have is the Serpent Grid. The Serpent Grid or the Serpent A pin was also created during this period by the Pleiadian Nibiru and Anunnaki. This A-pin runs on dimensional 4, dimensional 5, and dimensional 11 reverse currents and connects to the phantom Nibiru and other planets via the Phoenix wormhole in the Bermuda Triangle. It uses spike site implant technology that links to Giza itself, and it was activated as recently around the 1700s. So these networks, they're building more of or trying to. Now we're not seeing any new networks being turned on because now that the, the you know, the amethyst order is here, they will not allow it, right? They'll shut it down. So every time that they try and do it, it's no bueno and no good. So no go. So next we have, the dragon grid. Now, this looks kind of crazy. You're looking at it like, wow, there's a dragon drawn over a map. 
Yes, it is. But there is a symbolism that is being used here to show you how these kind of these grids kind of work. They're not the usual up and downs, right? Or maybe not even as extensive as some of the four living creature grids. So in 7, 75,000 BC, the dragon apen was created by draconian groups. Its head extends into far eastern Siberia, China, and Japan, and its body reaches into South America. It runs on reverse 10D current and forms a connection between Earth and descended planets in the Phantom Matrix. The rebel dragon moth draconians aim to defeat both the guardians and the negative alien agenda within the final battle, right? So this dragon grid is essentially not part of well, it's 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 not a, they're not good entities right they're evil entities but they're not a part of the negative alien alliance or the guardians they're an outside group so we're going to talk about who the dragon moth is now this is symbolism right symbolism the dragon moth the dragon moth omnicrons started to place their alien machinery in the planet at the time of the Nephilim Wars, when the Anunnaki began to negotiate with the Orion Group because they needed military support to take over Earth and parallel Earths. So approximately 75,000 BC, at the time of this conflict with the Nephilim, the Nephilim were on Earth. They installed the dragon moth grids. The dragon moth grid has its top part running into Siberia, Russia, and the main body extends through Asia, the Middle East, and into North China and Japan. These agendas run parallel with the Alpha Omega agenda, the Armageddon software, and are referred to as the Black Dragon Agendas, which is a subsidiary agenda to ride the coattail of the Armageddon software to achieve their own dominion over the Dragon Moth Grid in the Asian area. The Dragon Grid and the Black Dragon Agenda is all connected to the Dragon Moth entities of the Orion Group. This is why the Black Dragon Agenda supports the Armageddon scenario into a World War III. They believe that they will get the Dragon Moth Grid completely activated and controlled if World War III was instigated, and they push that to happen through the world of terrorism. So we see how this is working out, right? We see how this is being laid out. So now we're going to talk about the dragon moth and the dragon grid. So let us keep going. The guardian teams have been spending time in very unpleasant area that is called the dragon moth grid, which is instrumental in holding down layers of the phantom matrix timelines. It is understood that this particular grid feeds into many of the Black Sun's golden goose structures, which harvest vast amounts of Loche energy for running their systems in the Earth, such as feed lines in the multiple billion-dollar industry of the pharmaceutical and such and such other companies, which we are, will not be named because it's YouTube, but we know what they are. Many of us realize full well that they are putting every, re every resource now into expanding the global agenda filled with poisons, we know what we're talking about, and this is the alien grid that supports, protects, and feeds this dreadful network of anti-human structures, right? We can't say certain things because we're on YouTube. This probably would have been better for, uh, for us to do on um, a different site, but it's okay. We're coming up on um, the last vestiges of what we're talking about right so we're going to talk about the jehovah grids we could keep going into the dragons and the moth but we're running short on time and i don't want to basically this is these type of entities are super bloodthirsty entities they work with fully assimilated ai systems right they're very aggressive and they try to gain control over some of the black magic grids that are like the black magic grids are, are layered within some of these other grids. Right. So we have to be careful when this specific type of information comes up, not to stay there too long. Some of these entities are fully cyborg now. So there's a transhumanist agenda with this as well. 
This is a, what a lot of the elites are co-signed on to. We know this for sure. For sure. So let's go over the Jehovah Grids. So aside from the four living creatures, which is the original founder consciousness planetary grid networks for the planet Earth, there are intruder networks designed specifically as alien architecture by the negative entities. One such grid network is referred to as the Jehovian Grids or the Dove Grid. Approximately during the planetary damage created during the Luciferian Rebellion, the Jehovian factions of the Anunnaki installed the siphoning grid network to mock the Holy Spirit of Christ and to kill the peace of the symbolic dove. This is why this is referred to as the hijacked dove grid. This particular network is primarily about reversing the seventh dimensional current in a reverse spiral formation, which acts like a spike or an impaling rod in the planet to hold down the crucifixion implants that were inserted into the planetary body and crucifying the Christos spirit. This negative network links to the Phoenix grid, which is another intruder network. And this network holds down the seventh dimensional ray reversals of primary controls of the planetary logos and therefore the magnetosphere. A part of this architecture uses the macrocosm version of the crucifixion implant in the planetary body, right? And of course, it's impaled the primary seven impaling rods in the eastern seaboard of the United States. This is what makes the Jehovian Grin synonymous, referring to the planetary crucifixion implants and their related architecture to hold them into place. This is orchestrated from 5D Earth or Terra, right? This is the main control of this network is from Terra and into this timeline of the planet. This is the unhealed trauma of cataclysm and event records in the land mass existence. This runs that 7th D reversal current along with much trauma memories lodged into the planet in the locations in which it resides, right? This also connects to the current... You know, it connects to a into a current reversal located in a ninth dimensional stargate and an eleventh dimensional stargate, which is Stonehenge, right? So, this was made possible because of the next grid. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not going to say it, but I'm going to put it up on the screen for you to read it. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's keep going. Some things I can't say. No, the Jehovah, the Jehovian grids are not with Jesus. No. There is a there is a religion called the Jehovah's Witnesses, right? And I'm not going to say that it's wrong or right, but the Jehovians are aligned with that sort of mentality, right? It's not the pure christos consciousness it is a diluted version of the christos mission right so let us keep going the nephilim reversal grids this is the the headquarters of our hub is stonehenge and the area acts as the final collection point of directing huge amounts of electromagnetic power through massive amounts of collected stolen life force from multiple subsidiaries all over the planetary globe and the planetary grid lines, as well as the planetary as, as these planetary gates. The archontic deception strategy is directly inflicted with sexual misery, sexual abuse, and sexual slavery on this planet. This is what the Nephilim reversal grids is, right? bad one that's a bad one so next we have the michael mary turnstile matrix we talked about the michael and mary before and now we're talking about the antithesis of that right so this grid is part of the larger Can canadian uh, canadian so-called michael mary turnstile matrix 
Its several smaller wheels operate in North America. This control system now includes the White Eagle A-pin and is used to broadcast subliminal mind control or scalar programs, right? The NDC photosonic pulses block the reverse, uh, uh, block and reverse the polarity in some of Earth's axial, axional or vertical ley lines and horizontal grids, creating a checkerboard of alternate of alternate active and dormant frequencies and named the checkerboard matrix. So what does that mean? <clears throat> that means that there are two grids that are overlapping each other. And sometimes some of those areas turn white. Sometimes those areas turn black. They're good. They're bad. They're good. They're bad. And it's like a checkerboard. It's alternating. Right. But this is the subliminal mind control scalar program. And notice how North America and so different from Europe, from Australia, from China, from Africa. And we see how man is reacting within the North American continent to some of these other places. It's insane. This is the network in which they basically run all of their programs that make us who we are, right? So this has created a huge checkerboard mutation in all life on Earth, what science calls junk DNA. The NDC grid can be used for pole shifts, which was the intention, but it was re recently disconnected from the wormwood by the ET meditation techniques applied at certain and specific sites by indigo humans working with the guardian ETs. However, the Anunnaki then utilized the 24 crystal template until again, and the indigos deactivated it yet again. The crystal temples, one by one, they deactivated them. Nevertheless, this could still be effective by running off the additional NDCs on parallel Earths. Even planets have separate polarities, as with particles and antiparticles. Following this attempt to activate the Canadian Michael Mary Turnstile Matrix and to use it to relink to Stonehenge, Right to give sufficient power to blend the falcon and the phoenix wormholes and put all their A pins online at the same time. This was the mission, right? This was stymied. And I'm going to tell you why it was stymied. And this is the last slide for tonight. The Michael Mary Reversal Networks. This is the reason why these can't all be on at the same time, right? This is the reason why the negative alien agenda matrix grids cannot be all turned on together, right? This is stopping it from doing so. So this is the reversal networks that have alien machinery planetary grids that splinter gender apart and the anti-heragomical union, right? The result of this grid is to promote the splitting apart of the layers of souls through marriage and basically the splitting of the sixth and seventh dimension. This is called the spiritual ascension process or building of the wings. These grids also feed the mind control belief and the systems of sexual misery in the human race, as well as hatred between the sexes. So this is the reversal, right? And, when we talk about what we talked about before, which was, I'll tell you exactly what it was. We're going to go back up. The way that they counteract this specific one is back here. We're going to fly through the slides real quick. Uh, there we go. The false Michael construct is what we do to essentially wipe out a lot of what this separation has caused. And we're getting back now in this ascension cycle back to that equated equal of male and female, right? The energies, the sexes, the genders, whatever you want to call it, doesn't make a difference. We're talking about energies, right? So this was the presentation for today. I really, really hope you got something out of this because I, I, I thought this information was just so epic that I had to, I, it just took me about two hours to put together. 
because I read it and I was like, this has to be put out. We have to tell people about these grids. These grids are so important. They're so important. So please share this information out so we can save as many people from being latched into these negative grids and being stuck within this alien machinery and being churned through and mind controlled and all the rest of it. Also, please leave a comment when this is finished. There is no greater thing that you can do besides smash that like button and leave a comment when it's finished because that will put the algorithm to see that people are interacting with this video and YouTube will promote it more. And if you've seen my analytics anytime recently, that, you know, the YouTube has been stomping on my analytics, right? And essentially, we have to shake that up, right? And I'm going to say this, Andromeda, that's actually false. The Earth is not a prison planet. This is a hospital planet. This is where we go to find our Christos mission, find it, and excel towards those next dimensional realities and make our way up the chain, back up the chain. But you have to come here to do that. You can't just do it without any, without, you know, without essentially going through it. That's why this is a hospital planet, not a prison planet. And every moment on this planet is a gift. It's a gift to understand yourself more and to maybe not have to do it again to move into that 5D realm. So every moment you're here, feel gratitude for that specific moment. You know, it's a, it, it, it really is a gift. You know, that's I, I, I truly feel that. And that's how we work our way back to the unconditional love of everything. We need to love everything and everyone. So with all that being said, as we've gone an hour, please leave a comment underneath this. Um, I hope you've gotten something from this information. We'll be back in another day or two. I have off on Friday this week. We're, uh, we're going to be on the Paranormal Roundtable <clears throat> with Josh Turner on Friday evening. Um, so keep a lookout for that. We're also going to be on Step Into the Paranormal on uh, January 15th, which is a Sunday. And you can go over and you can support one of our good friends, Ernie Atwell, at Step Into the Paranormal. Really great guy, really great show. Him and David are just completely amazing. And uh, we're going to kick off the year right with them. And we're going to have a lot of fun. So, again, share, like, subscribe, leave a comment. That's all I ask. If you can support the broadcast, please look at the PayPal link up above on the chat and support us any way you can. All, all proceeds go back into the pod, into the broadcast and into the information. So thank you all very much, and I hope you all have a great evening. And thank God we're into the new year. The year 2023 will be the year of accountability. It's already happening. Look around you. It's already happening. I love you all. Thank you.